Goeiedag en baie welkom by jyvrou Marks sy virtuele klas kome. Dit is hier waar ons Afrikaans sommer lach lach leer. Ek smaak sy spot as this is where you need to be to bet your Afrikaans every day. Now, before we kick off with today's Afrikaans work, I want to remind you that Earth Day is tomorrow on the 22nd of April. Remember, you can play your part to save our environment and prevent climate change simply by recycling paper. Let's look at the quote I presented you with yesterday. How wonderful it is that nobody need wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. And you can do just that simply by recycling paper products. To get us in the mood for Earth Day, here are two more jokes. What did the ground say to the earthquake? You crack me up. And why did the woman go outdoors with her purse open? Because she expected some change in the weather. Don't forget to collect bottle tops and bread tags for the Sweetheart's Wheelchair Foundation. This foundation recycles the bottle tops and bread tags and use the money to buy wheelchairs for people who cannot otherwise afford them. Collecting bottle tops and bread tags is something that every one of us can do. Why don't you also ask your family and friends to do the same? On Thursday, we are celebrating World Book Day. It's going to be on the 23rd of April. You can celebrate World Book Day by simply reading a story or perhaps dressing up as your favorite character. I'm sure it will make your lockdown a little more fun if you get to be this creative. Vandaag is dinsdag. Today is Tuesday. Die datum is 21 April 2020. The date is the 21st of April 2020. Who like the weer buitenkant jou venster? What is the weather like outside? Here by my skyn die son al die jaarlik. It's sunny where I am at currently. Ons is tans in herfs. We are currently in autumn. Kom ons oefen vandagse spelwoorde. Let's practice today's spelling words. Die spelwoorde gaan oor herwinning. The topic of today's spelling words center around recycling. Ons eerste woordkie is herwin, which means recycle. Herwinning means recycling. Hergebruik, reuse, verminder, reduce, en drom, a bin. Rommel, trash, papier, paper. Blikkies, cans, asblik, dustbin, en omgeving, environment. Moe nie vergeet om een sinnetje met elkeen van die woorde te maak nie. Don't forget to make a sentence with each of these words. Well, if you're bored, here's a great idea. Why don't you get creative and design a poster in Afrikaans about recycling in the environment? I mean, you've got these words now. You might as well use them. And I'd love to see your posters once we are back at school. Ondou om ook hier die woorde in jou persoonlijke woordeboek in te skryf. Remember to write each of these spelling words in your personal dictionary. Kom ons gebruik die voorbeeld van omgeving. Let's use the example of omgeving, which means environment. Step 1. Go to the E tab, E for environment, in your personal dictionary. Second step. Write the word environment and next to it Afrikaans meaning omgeving. Step 3. It will look like this. First the English environment and next to it the Afrikaans omgeving. Kom ons loer na kwartal 2 se mondeling. Ek het jou reeds al vertel dat kwartal 2 se mondeling onvoorbereid gaan wees. I've already mentioned in each of my videos that Tim 2's oral is going to be unprepared. Rach, but here's the good news. Doing an unprepared speech might be very daunting and therefore we've simplified it a little bit. You will get to choose a topic from a list and you'll have three minutes to prep. So, let's get practicing by looking at today's topic. And remember, if you speak about these topics, your oral skills will improve, your vocabulary will enlarge, and when the time comes, you're going to do an amazing unprepared speech. Vandaagse onderwerp is, wie is jou gunsteling 
acteur of actrice en waarom? Who is your favorite actor or actress and why? Kom ons kyk weer na trappe van vergelijking. Let's take another look at degrees of comparison. Trappe, literally translated, means stairs, which kind of makes sense if you think about the progression there is from a word in this positive to the comparative and to the superlative. And remember, vergelijking means comparing or to compare or a comparison. Kom ons kyk weer na gisterse voorbeelde. Let's take another look at yesterday's examples. Jong, jonger en jongste. Young, younger en youngest. Groot, groter en grootste. Big, bigger en biggest. Koud, kouer en koudste. Cold, Colder and coldest. Hard, harder in hardste. Loud, louder and the loudest. Swar, swarder in swarste. Heavy, heavier and the heaviest. Vinnig, vinniger, vinnigste. Fast, faster and fastest. Ons het gisterse trappe van vergelijking in een tabel geskryf. We wrote yesterday's degrees of comparison in a table format. I asked you to identify the pattern or the rule we use, generally speaking, there are always exceptions of course, to put each of the words into the comparative and the superlative. I also made mention that sometimes the spelling changes when you put a word in the comparative or superlative. Ek het gister vir jou hier die vier woorde gegee om in die vergrootende en oortreffende trap te skryf. Yesterday I asked you to write these four words in the comparative and superlative. Hier is die antwoorde. Here are the answers. Lui, luier en luiste, wild, wilder en wildste, flux, fluxer en fluxte, stadig, stadiger en stadigste. Al wat jy moes doen, is om die e en die r by te sit in die vergrootende trap, en ook die st e, die ste klankie in die oortreffende trap. All you had to do was follow the rules. You add ER to the comparative and STE in the superlative. Kom ons oefen nog een bykie ons trappe van vergelijking. Let's practice some more degrees of comparison. Rooi, vars, warm en mooi. Please note that when you put these four words in the comparative and superlative, there will not be a change in spelling. Just simply add the ER and the ST, that's it. Ek sal in die volgende video die antwoorde gee. I will share the answers with you in the next video. Ons het ook gister na Stompie gekyk. We also had a look at Stompie yesterday. Remember, Stompie is your best buddy in Afrikaans. Stompie is jou beste moeike in Afrikaans, want Stompie help jou. Kom ons loer het gegeen weer na wat Stompie is. Let's look at Stompie again. Stompie is an acronym. That means that each letter represents something. So the S in Stompie represents the subject. V1 is your verb. Sometimes there are two verbs. We started looking at that yesterday and we're going to continue with that today. The T in Stompie is the time word. The O is the object. The M is the manner. The P is the place. And verb 2 comes last. And then a little later only will we look at the infinitive. Basically Stompie is a recipe that tells you exactly how to write parts of sentences in the correct order in Afrikaans. 
We start with the most basic of sentences. Die seen skop die sokkerbal. To identify the subject in a sentence, we ask who or what. Skop is our action word, what is being done. And to identify the object, the soccer ball, we ask V of what again. Let me give you an example. V scope the soccer ball, the CN. So we know the CN is the subject. What scope the CN? What is it? The soccer ball. And then we get the answer to the object. We added the time word and we firstly looked at present tense sentences. I gave you examples of time words that will tell you that you are currently in the present tense. Elke dag, every day. No, now. Vandaag, today. Tans, currently. We went one step further, we added the manner. To identify the manner in a sentence, we ask how. How is the action performed? How was the ball kicked? Bayard. Very hard. In last tense was the plek, the place where the boy kicks the soccer ball today. And it is in the time in the garden. Now, gister het ons gekyk na Stompie en verlede tyd. Yesterday we took a peek at Stompie and past tense sentences. Stompie helps us to put sentences correctly in the past tense. Well, I broke the good news about past tense in Afrikaans yesterday, but let's go through it one more time. Are you learning endless lists of English past tense verbs, like for example, catch, caught, eat, ate, throw, threw, danced, danced, go, went, forget, forgot, and the list continues? Afrikaans has no past tense verbs. So, how do we put a sentence in the past tense then? Well, there's two steps you have to follow. Step one, you add G, a G and a E, you add G to verb one. Then, you move verb one right to the back of the sentence, in verb two's place. But then, we have to put head in verb one. Let me illustrate. For example, die seen skop die sokkerbal. Basic sentence with a subject, a verb and an object. Step 1. Add G to your verb 1. Verb 1 is skop. So it will become geskop. If you read the sentence now, it reads die seen geskop die sokkerbal. Which does not make sense at the moment. Let's look at step 2. Now we move verb 1 geskop all the way to the back in verb 2's place. But we can't leave verb 1 empty now. Therefore, we add the word het in the place of verb 1. The sin is now in the verlede tijd. This sentence is in the past tense. The sin het die sokkerbal geskop. Here is the three sinne wat jy gister vir my in die verlede tijd moest skryf. Here are the three sentences I gave you yesterday that you had to correctly write in the past tense. Nummer 1. Die skole het vir die vakantie gesluit. Nummer 2. Zunaid het die rechte antwoord geraai. En nummer 3. Bukang het in die vakantie vir jaar. Wow, look at that one. This one doesn't get a ge added to it. Kom ons kyk nou na Stompie en een verlede tyd sin. Let's look at Stompie. And the structure of a past tense sentence in Afrikaans. Die sien is our subject. Het is verb 1 because we know we're working with a past tense sentence. Gister could possibly be your time word. Object, the soccer ball. Manner, by heart. In die tuin is the place. And lastly, geskop. So now we've placed that sentence of ours in the past tense by simply adding het and a ge to the verb and kicking the verb to the back. Here are examples of past tense time words. Gister, yesterday. Eer gister, the day before. Verlede week of verlede maand of verlede jaar. Um, last week, last month, last year. Onlangs, recently. Kom ons oefen om nog sinne in die verlede tyd te skryf. 
Let's practice writing more sentences in the past tense. Nummer 1. Het gebak gister a koek liegle. This sentence does not make sense one bit. Each part of the sentence is scrambled. We really need Stompy to clear up the mess. Now, I want you to take out your color pencils and I want you to try and identify each part of the sentence. Doen dit nou op jou eie. Kom ons kyk of jy elke deelkie van die sin correct kon identificeer. Let's see if you could correctly identify each part of the sentence. Het is a verb that indicates its past tense. Gebak is also a verb that once again indicates its past tense because of the ge. Gister is our time word. A cook would be the object and liegle would be the subject. Use stompy to unscramble the sentence. Here is the answer. Liegle is the subject. Liegle comes first. Het is verb 1. Gister is our time word. Our object is a cook. The sentence does not have the manner or the place. And it has verb 2 at the back. Gebak. Liegle het gister a cook gebak. Kom ons doen nog een voorbeeld. Gespeel verlede week het a video spieliekie Darren in sy kamer. Shoo, dit is behoorlijk een mond vol. Grijp jou een keer potloore en kyk of jy elke deelkie van die sin correct kan identificeer. Take your color pencils and see if you can correctly identify each component of the sentence. Kom ons kyk na die antwoorde. Gespeel is definitely a verb. The time word is verlede week. Het is also a verb. A video spieliekie is the object. Darren is the subject and in sy kamer is the place in his room. Is die plek waar hy a video spieliekie speel. Ek hoop dat jy hier die dele correct kon identificeer. I hope that you could correctly identify each part of the sentence. Skryf nou hierdie sin in die rechte volgorde. Please write the sentence in the correct order by using Stompy. Here is the answer. Darren, subject. Het will be verb 1. Verlede week, last week, is our time word. A video spieliekie, a video game. There is no manner in which Darren plays his video game. In sy kamer is the place where the action takes place. And verb 2 at the back is gespeel. Darren het verlede week a video spieliekie in sy kamer gespeel. Activiteit 15. Activity 15. Your mission, if you choose to accept, is to unscramble each sentence by using the Stompy acronym. Jy moet Stompy gebruik om elke deelkie van die sin in die rechte volgorde te skryf. Nummer 1. Verlede jaar, last year, soccer, soccer, het, that could possibly be a verb, by the school, at school, gespeel, played, to Nash. Nummer 2. Het, a mooi briefie, let do, geskryf, in haar kamer, hier gister. Did, a beautiful letter, let to, wrote in her room the day before yesterday. Nummer drie. Het in die eerste termijn gedoen, ipeling, haar huiswerk, by die huis. Het, dit, in die eerste termijn, in the first term, gedoen, which is the past tense of do, Ipeling, haar huiswerk, her homework, by die huis, at the house. Hierdie sinne is behoorlik een mondvol, omdat elke sin baie komponente van Stompie bevat. These sentences are quite a mouthful, as each sentence 
comprises of many different components in the STOMPI acronym. Well, ons het aan die einde van vandagse les gekom. We've come to the end of today's lesson. Baie dankie dat jy hier die video kyk en so hard werk om jou Afrikaanse punte te verbeter. Thank you so much for watching this video and putting in the hard work and effort to improve your Afrikaans. Ek is baie trots op elkeen van julle. I'm so proud of each and everyone watching this video. Ek hoop om julle morgen weer te sien. Tot ziens!